Hello. Hey, everybody. How are you? Welcome to everybody who's in the chat. I see all our members there as well. Thank you so much for being here. I just love seeing all of you. I hope you know that. Love seeing you here. Thank you too to my mods, my Tony's here, Nancy's here. If you have a question today, put question in front of it in all caps and have your question follow. Our super chats get started automatically, but we want to keep an eye out for those other questions. So please do that. I'm Natalie, and this is Scientology Life After a Cult, where we talk about the Scientology news that has the internet buzzing. We also share about my 35 years in Scientology and how I left with three generations of my family. You can also catch interviews that I do with people in the ex-Scientology community, people who are protesting, live streaming, and just have something to do with this great big world of exposing Scientology as the human trafficking cult that it is. Thank you so much for being here. Please, everybody, hit that like button on your way in and subscribe to the channel as well. I would really appreciate your support that way. Okay, we are going to cover a lot today. We are going to talk, uh, we're going to touch on, of course, Clearwater election news. We are going to talk about some protest news, including DOA and Scientology Audit Streets LA, what happened in court yesterday. And then we're going to jump into some stalking. Scientology is up to their usual fair game ways, and they have been working with La Poubelle. We're going to jump into some stalking that occurred last night that was very interesting. Then we're going to jump over and check out some protest news in some other states, as well as Austin, where one of my favorite protesters, Pearl Snappy, is in the crosshairs of the police there, and we're going to talk about why and share some clips about it. So there you go, everybody. And I wanted to give a big thank you to Lisa Gillespie for becoming a new member of the channel. Hip, hip, hooray. I appreciate that so much. Thank you. All right, people. Let's first talk about, let's jump over to growing up in Scientology. Aaron was with Mark Bunker and talking about what happened with the elections last night. So let's get that pulled up. Let's get that pulled up. Not that one. I loved that they were together yesterday, you know, when the results were coming in, even though spoiler, spoiler alert, it was not the news we wanted to hear. It still is always great when, uh, Mark Bunker is together with Aaron. And for those that don't know, if you're new to the channel, Mark Bunker is an OG protester of Scientology. I'm talking for decades. I'm talking back in the anonymous days when he was known as Wise Beard Man. And it's great to see that he served the years that he did on the Clearwater City Council. So let's take a little look and a listen here. All right, hold on a second. I need to check something because I don't think you guys are going to be able to hear that because I'm not hearing it in the right place. So let's just check a couple settings, get rid of that, see if it makes a difference. We're having some odd technical difficulties. I'll just let you, you guys know up front today. I wasn't able to upload a thumbnail on StreamYard or on YouTube when I went in to do this. So hopefully... What I'm saying is, is the guy who won... Hopefully, we will be able to resolve this. You did hear it? You hear it? Okay. All right. It's weird that I'm not hearing it through my Brian, ears, so we're going to go with he's it. He's a, a good guy. Um, the one thing is, though, he um, does not say anything about Scientology. Uh, he, his position was, well... I'm a religious person. I have a church, and they they have a church. We, you know, I'm not going to judge anyone. Essentially, um, so there's no one on the council now who's going to be talking about Scientology. Really, that means I have to attend the meetings in the audience and get up and talk for three minutes at the podium. So I'll still have a voice there, even though I won't have a hand in how the city negotiates moving forward. All right. So what I'm there you is, go. Is Good news that he'll still have, uh, you know, have a voice. And I know he'll use that voice. He always has. He has for a long time. I love this. Danny, wait. What, well, I think she means wise beard man has much to do still. I don't think that just because he's not on the council, he's going to stop trying to take Scientology down. I would agree with that 100%. 100%. And happy to see that. 
I'm looking forward to meeting him. I don't think I've met him in person. So when my Tony and I head to Clearwater next month, we're going to be able to meet meet him, I hope. I hope, I hope, I hope. All right, you, some of you may know about this. I wanted to bring it to your attention. There is a link down below to this as well as all of the videos that we're going to be talking about. And I encourage you to go over and show your support for those creators who are out there protesting Scientology and raising awareness. One of them is L.A. Cam, and his grandparents tragically passed away, and there is a GoFundMe. They helped to raise Cam, and um, they both unfortunately passed away at the same time, and um, he is going to need help with that. So if you can, if you feel so moved, you know, uh, get over there and donate if you can. If you can share the link even, you know, or even it, it, there's so many ways to contribute that are not financial. So I want you to be aware of that. There's a link down below. Be sure to take a look at that. And uh, just, it, it's just tragic. It's tragic. And I'm sure that he will be back and we're wishing him well and just have the best thoughts and intentions for healing for him and his family. All right. I wanted to show you something that uh, got sent to me by Sweet Lily Love. Y you know I love these musical remixes. I, ju I just love them. I don't know about you guys. Tell me in the chat. Tell me in the comments. I really enjoy them. I get such a kick out of it. And Sweet Lily Love put together this little ditty about the, I think it's called Squirrel Squad. But hold on, we're going to get that pulled up. See, look at this. What is it doing? In early 2023, a small number of TikTok streamers began live broadcasting their protests outside the Scientology Test Center in Hollywood, California, exposing the cult's evil human and child trafficking practices. These protesters were soon the target of Scientology's dirty tricks, as well as harassment by the corrupt Los Angeles Police Department. Despite this, others soon joined them, and the movement spread across the country and the world. Armed only with cell phones, signs, and a spirit of camaraderie, these brave protesters have driven one of the world's most powerful cults into hiding. And though they are all individuals, and not organized in any manner, collectively they have been given one name, the Squirrel Squad. Pack it up. <laughs> Pack it up, I love that. It's just so cool. It's two minutes and 24 seconds, so we can't listen to the whole thing, but I loved it. I thought that was great. So fun. So fun. So you guys be sure to check it out. Link down below so you can see the whole thing. I just thought it was great. I loved it a lot. Need the link so we can share. Nancy just shared the link in the comments, and I do believe it's down below in the, in the uh, description of this video with links to everything else that we're going to be talking about. Okay, the SP Chef. I love this guy. He did a little video. He is new to me. He might be new to you as well. His channel again is the SP Chef, but take a look at this. This is no happy birthday to Ron. Uh, it was L. Ron Hubbard's birthday recently, as many of you know. And uh, yeah, this is his no happy birthday to Ron. Check it out. No happy birthday to Ron. Your whole stick was a con. Your buildings are empty. And there are SPs now in plenty. Hubbard, darling, do piss off. <laughs> it's short and sweet, but how great is that? I absolutely loved it. 
I just love when people bring creative ways to raise awareness about Scientology. It, like I talk about, it brings a bit of balance from things that are so, you know, ick because they are and uncomfortable to talk about because it should be because it is uncomfortable. It is uh, so I love it when people bring a little bit of humor to it as well. And Nerd Report did that again. I don't know if you guys caught this. Link down below to the full video, but you're going to want to check this out. First, we had mini streets, and now Nerd Report has mini DOA. And uh, what's hilarious about this, what makes me really laugh too, is, is Scotty's laugh. He just has the best laugh. <laughs> but check this out. <laughs> What do you think of that guy? What do you think of that guy? Oh, I, I love it. I love it. It reminded me of the hand from the uh, uh, Liar Liar. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wasn't that great? Right? Elliot, just hilarious. I just love it. Free DOA socks. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Scotty has such a dirty laugh. <laughs> Uh, don't worry about Thayton. You were going to, uh, there's, inf oh, you know what? That's right. You didn't see it because YouTube would not let me upload a thumbnail today. But on my thumbnail is a pic of Scotty in his suit. I do have a clip of him. So you'll see a little bit of it. You'll see a little bit of it. He looked fantastic. He looked great. Yes, that's right, Bad Thayton. He's referring to the claw. For those that did not see that, there was the claw. I think he went, Jim Carrey went after his uh, kid in the movie with that, right? They would do the claw. <laughs> oh, so funny. I love it so much. Yeah, Kelly, he did. He looked great. He looked really handsome in his suit. Just looked fantastic. Uh, we're going to share a clip, like I said, that's going to be coming up. In fact, I think I'm getting to it right now, where he talks about how court was moved, some neck stabs, and uh, commentary on F Francois Coster's uh, what she chose to wear to court as well, which I found interesting. So let's take a little look and a listen at this. And you can also see some of Scotty's suit there too. So check it out. It's a quasi-judicial proceeding, which means it has some of the, the safeguards of the Constitution, but not really all of them because you, you volunteer into that jurisdiction. So they moved us over into another courtroom and in that courtroom, uh, they didn't even tell Good's lawyer because Good's lawyer had nothing to do with it. He didn't. She didn't even know that it got moved. I had to call. I had to call Streets and let Streets know that it got moved to the courtroom. So then she popped in over there, and um, she was trying to basically file like an emergency injunction. Was basically what she was trying to verbally do, saying that. Uh, Francois was in danger and she was up on the fifth floor and couldn't come down. She wore furry Crocs to court. <laughs> like, I'm so glad I went and got a suit because she wore Crocs with fur on. Said. <laughs> Crocs with the fur. <laughs> I didn't even know there were such things as furry Crocs. And uh, side note, I've never owned a pair of Crocs. Not because I don't know why. Well, in the beginning, I just didn't get it. But now, now I got to say, I kind of want a pair. Not so much Crocs. Have you seen those ones that are like those cloud slippers? I've seen those. I was telling Tony that we should get matching ones. But now that I know there are Crocs with fur, I'm like, oh, could that work here in Minnesota? I don't know. But I definitely would not wear it to court. <laughs> Crocs with fur. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> That's right. KG214, love my Crocs. Not to court, though. <laughs> yeah, uh, Leisha, no, it was, uh, it was Francois, wasn't it, who was wearing the, the Crocs with the fur? Yep, D, they're totally more house slippers. Oh, and thank you for the reminder, Dr. MLS. Everybody hit that like button. Would appreciate it if you check your subscribe button as well. 
Okay, we're going to take a look at another clip where Scotty gets a little bit more into what happened when they were in the courtroom. And you get another look at his handsome mug with that suit, too. All right, check it out. Hold on. Good is my... Oh, yeah, the mentor. William Good there probably praised Hoxer, saying, I love the way DOA... And he's reading the documents that he was given in court. Hoxeter didn't hesitate to take out that guy. However, Hoxeter was arrested. Not true. That's just not true. I was it was the attorney wearing the Crocs with the fur? People are commenting, oh my gosh, that's even worse. Was not arrested for any bike incident at all. This um, is just so crazy that they're just... Oh, yeah. Well, here's his, this, his hate gang. There's a hate gang. Wait, there's more verbiage. I don't know what a hate gang is, but we're about to come onto the hate gang. <laughs> You see, that is part of the narrative. What happens in the world of Scientology is they have a very standard thing that they follow where they use a lot of propaganda and what they call dead agenting, right? Where they take information, a lot of it is often false about somebody or taken out of context, and they put it together and they present it to law enforcement, to people in the community to make them think less of the person who has the disagreements with Scientology or who is exposing Scientology and their corruption. I don't know why they wouldn't like that. <laughs> And this is what they do. So that that's part of it. There's there when you when you go and you watch the whole video where Scotty shares pretty much everything in the documents that he got, you hear that narrative and and it also shows you the ties between Scientology and the owner and people at La Poubelle. And this is an important tie because we're going to see that play out. We're going to see that play out more, especially in the clips that I'm going to be sharing with you about what happened with people being followed yesterday. But I want you to keep in mind, these are Scientology tactics. This is what L. Ron Hubbard said to do. He said, never defend, always attack always attack. And you hear it in the narrative that's being spun about Scotty, about other protesters, about everybody as a whole. People who are protesting Scientology are independent citizens doing so, who have, some of them have a shared experience as ex-Scientologists. Some of them just feel called to use their voice to do something about these human rights abuses that are occurring. Scientology will always have their own narrative about that. And Scientology Scientology supporters as well. It's always interesting to me to see what that narrative is. So we are going to see it more and more. We are going to take a look at what happened last night with the stalking. And then when we get to the Austin news, we're actually going to have Pearl Snappy on. She's going to jump in and fill us in on why the Austin police seem to be after her and have threatened to actually arrest her. So we are going to get to that. So hold tight. But in the meantime, we are going to go take a look at what happened at La Poubelle. It was crazy, you guys. Do you remember Cheeseburger Guy? He's been called Cheeseburger Guy, Hamburger Guy. You'll be able to see a photo of him. He is the one who followed Solomon. And Cuts E went after him to get him to not, to not follow Solomon. So this was the same guy. And remember, we're talking about these tactics that Scientology and by extension now La Poubelle uses to attempt to intimidate protesters or anyone speaking up about the abuses in Scientology and the tie that Francois Coster has to Danny Masterson, who is now in prison. So... You're going to see that play out a lot, play out a lot. But let's take a look at this. Let's start with, I think this is Cuts E outside La Poubelle. What's up, bro? What's up, bro? How you doing? What's up, bro? What's up, bro? What's up, bro? From where? Oh, you know, hamburger guy? What? I see him? Huh? I see him. So that's him there, and he's following Solomon right now, trying to find out from Solomon what his last name is. And remember, Solomon is a minor. Hey, are you Hey, are you the hamburger? No, no, that's the hamburger guy. I'm with them, I can't know. Uh, what? I'm with our uh, friend's family. Yeah, we can't. Because you ripped down the signs. I'm going back. Yeah, I'm ripping the signs, though. Come on, dude. Leave. Go, oh, come on, come on. Solomon, this guy's the one. Yeah, this is Chief Burger, guys. Hamburger, wait. Right? Hey, what is home and go? What is home and go? So you see him there, right? 
Well, it gets a bit more intense, people, because he ends up then following Cutsy when Cutsy is heading home. So let's take a look at that because he was able to capture that on video and share it. Link down below to the full video. Take a look. I get the police. I'm gonna call the police right now. You keep following me. This guy keeps following me. Hello, why are you following me? Follow me, dude. Why are you following me? See? Creep about it. Look. He's still following me, see? Bro, he's following me, see? You can see the car turning around there. And he does, he does, he not only follows Solomon last night, who, by the way, he followed all the way to the subway, followed him. He followed Cutsy around for a while. He followed, he followed We in LA, not just around La Poubelle either. For 20 to 30 minutes, he actually followed her and chased her by car. Super creepy, right? That's not weird. It's completely weird. <laughs> and this is a total Scientology tactic. So check this out. Because what they're trying to do is intimidate protesters into not protesting, right? And this is We in LA, who was really, really, uh, you can hear it in her voice. She was scared. We're going to take a little look at a clip from last night. I'm going to need help. Somebody calling the police right now. The guy that set up DOA at La Poubelle has been chasing me for 20 minutes. He's not even making it a secret. Is anybody there? Is anybody there? Is anybody there? The, the guy that is chasing at La Poubelle is chasing me. He's been chasing me for 20 minutes to drive safe. I, uh, I couldn't get on live. I need somebody to call the police. I'm like literally 20, 30 minutes away from La Poubelle. He chased me all the way here. It's n it's not, um, I'm not being paranoid. He did, I made a U-turn. I am at um, Dixie Canyon Avenue. I'm passing. I'm gonna need help. Somebody calling the police right now. The guy. You can see link down below to her full video. This is just classic. He's probably, you know, what, what, on one hand, it's like, okay, he could be trying to just find out their name so Francois can serve them, but their names are already known. Scientology already knows their names. They're pretty good about finding that out pretty quick on the front end. It really, to me, this is my opinion, is it's, a, it's an intimidation tactic to do. And I find it very interesting, too, that the owner of La Poubelle is in court saying that I'm being followed home. These things, you know, stalking why she's trying to get this restraining order against DOA, against Scotty and against uh, Streets LA, William Goode. Yet here is her guy following people home, <laughs> stalking them, even a minor. And it doesn't make a lot of sense. The asking for their names is a, also, it's a form of intimidation. It doesn't mean that he doesn't know or that the people that he is reported to don't know. It's a form of intimidation. He also accused what Scientology operatives will do will accuse you of inappropriately doing things with kids, stuff like that. It's all to throw you and an attempt to intimidate. So he's definitely somebody to keep an eye on because you just never know, right? I don't know what his mental state is like. You just don't know these people who are hired to do this. So something to keep an eye on. But I think it's very interesting that that seems to be like on the day that they go to court for this restraining order, that this guy is out there doing this to so many people who are protesting. What is the deal? What is the deal? Christy is saying the guy's name is Henry. Don't know for sure if that's the case or not, but that's interesting. Christy, do you want to, if you can, share more about that? Uh, he was also in Aja's TikTok last night. Yep. 
definitely. And Freelance Adventure is saying, if you're driving and being followed in LA, go to a different police department and call that police department on the way. That is a great idea. That's a great idea. So keeping an eye on that, keeping an eye on that. Over in Pasadena, we've shared a couple clips from somebody, MD Media One, who found the side door Scientologists have been sneaking into in Pasadena. He's been out there a few times and it's been oddly quiet, right? It doesn't seem like people are really coming and going at all. Well, he just found that side door. So we are going to take a look at that. This is over in Pasadena. And this is MD Media One, linked down below to his full video. Oh, here we go, there we go. There's, there they are. These might be them. There is another door. There sure is another door, folks. Right there, I found the door. There, right there, guys. That's where they're sneaking in from the parking structure. Can you see? Damn it. Yeah, look at that, look at those beautiful mountains. Santa Anita racetrack is not too far from here, but I found their door they're sneaking in, guys. That's why it's so quiet over here. Secret door tech, I found it. Secret door tech. <laughs> it, it just kind of blows my mind how we've seen in at different Scientology organizations across the country, where not only are they locking the front doors, they're actually chaining the front doors. We saw that in St. Louis, and I still don't understand what that was all about. Let's not just lock the front door, let's chain it. We saw in Los Angeles, I shared a clip yesterday from Scientology in LA, where you could see a kid up at the front door trying to retrieve something and having to go through speaking to somebody over the intercom because the door is not just open. It is, again, it's part of this false narrative that Scientology wants to paint, that there is some danger to their well-being, because this is what they tell their people inside, that the protesters and live streamers are somehow violent criminals. And we know that not to be true. We see the live streams. And on the inside, they're not seeing it. They only see what they're told. They're only, they only hear the propaganda that is shared with them, and they believe it. So for Scientologists, it's like, oh, of course the door needs to be locked because these dangerous people out there. It's just all part of the propaganda machine from Scientology. And uh, super culty at the same time, it really is. We're going to hop over to Chicago quick where Scientology speaks to what sounds like a new Scientologist. These, these conversations with Scientologists are always interesting to me when they happen. And interestingly, I feel like we're seeing them more and more. More and more, I feel like we're seeing these. But this is Scientology in Chicago, speaking to a new Scientologist about the OCA, the personality test. She calls it the Alfred test, but it's the Oxford Capacity Analysis, more known as the personality test that Scientology does to scam people out of their money and gaslight them into believing their life is completely ruined and only Scientology can help them with that. Show me one person who doesn't have something that they could use some help on or that stresses them out, even if it's from time to time. This is completely geared to gaslight, find a person's ruin, as it's called in Scientology, and get them to buy. Take a look. The Alfred test, no matter if you pass them with flying colors, they will find a way to tell you that you filmed it and that you need Scientology to fix your life. This is so this is where we're going to stop talking because it That's okay. doesn't make sense to you keep it going. But I just want to let you know, before you go deeper in the religion, I just want to let you know where you're signing up. That's all I want to I let you know. know what I'm I don't think you do. If you did, Children are really and smart. That does not mean that they're adults with a lot. I don't I believe that children should audit adults. It's not out of context. Maybe one day you'll realize it. Don't let them end communication with you and your family. Don't end communication with you and your family. Look, she's walking in the middle of the street. That's a good thing to point out to her. Don't let them end communication with you and your family. The people who are new to Scientology, it, it, you know, it is a slow burn. It is a slow boil what happens. If people walked in and got how, say, somebody who had been in Scientology for years got that same treatment, 
they would immediately walk out. And sometimes that happens and they do. There are way more people that are introduced Scientology that then leave it early on than there are people who actually stay and stick it out. And this is evident by the low number of Scientologists all over the world. So that was really interesting because this is what happens. You do a beginning course, which this person said that she did. You get some gain out of it because some of it is common sense. And the helpful things in Scientology, especially in the beginning, those are natural universal truths that you can find in other places, other religions, other books. You might discover these things in therapy, other forms of self-help in psychology. But in Scientology, it's really pitched that these are the findings and discoveries of L. Ron Hubbard. And L. Ron Hubbard is source. They even refer to him as source in Scientology. That's why at the end of course room periods or at their events, it's the hip hip hooray for L. Ron Hubbard, who they acknowledge as source and actually call him source. And that's just, it's interesting because when I was in Scientology, I'm like, well, of course, source, he is the source of Scientology. But it really puts him at this almost like godlike worship level. There's no formal worship of him. The closest thing they have is probably the all of the acknowledgments. But uh, interesting nonetheless, and typical of somebody who's newer to Scientology. And you know what? Now that she knows, even though she disagrees, that seed has been planted. And when she sees it, because she will, she might remember, wait a minute, you know, children are uh, big beings and little bodies. Of course, children are brilliant and smart, but that does not mean that they should be auditing adults. I've shared with you guys when I was 16, as part of my training, I had to handle grown men who were in their, their the ones I spoke to, I think were in their 30s, about their self-pleasuring habits while they were on course. And like I said, I was like, I was a minor at the time. And that was the job I was being trained for. Just ick. Ick, ick. And there are children who are auditing adults and hearing about things they have no business hearing about. I don't know why anyone would think it would be okay, even if that person is your auditor, even in Scientology. I'd never been audited by a child, even when I was an adult. I just can't even imagine. I would not be comfortable discussing certain things because of that. But it happens, and it happens in Scientology. All right, let's jump over to Chicago. We're going to look at Trashy V12 BMW, who also speaks to a Scientologist talking about how Scientology uses information from these sessions against Scientologists if you speak out. This individual who's in Scientology doesn't believe that that is the case, but he will surely find that out if he does try to leave Scientology and say anything about it. Every ethics interview, every auditing session in Scientology is recorded. Everything is written down. And in Scientology auditing in many places, especially in Los Angeles and in Clearwater, those sessions are video recorded. In these new ideal organizations, they are equipped with video recording equipment. And it's not obvious where it is either, because that would be distracting to the pre-clear, which is what they call the person receiving the auditing. And if you step out of pocket with Scientology, not only will they threaten to expose the things that you share during these vulnerable sessions, but they will twist them. They will even outright lie about what they claim it is that you did. I have seen this play out for decades and had it happen to my own family when we left Scientology and found out what their narrative was, what they were trying to say about us. It's so dumb, but check this out. They give up personal information how could they possibly put it publicly online? So you're lying. Do you no, understand the, the question? Yes, I understand the question. question. If if you're giving up personal information in auditing, how could they put that online because it's yes. personal information? Yes. I I have seen people get audited online. I have. It's Scientology. But that's a lie. Do you understand what you say? That's a, that's a lie. It's amazing that you actually believe that. But but you're saying that you don't give up personal information in Absolutely auditing. Absolutely not. Okay. So so can you explain what what you do in auditing then? The only way that you could possibly understand well, the only way you could possibly understand mm -hmm. what's going on in auditing, guess what it is? Is go get audited? Yeah. I mean that that's the only way. But then you would have an objective personal experience of what that is. Yes, yes, I agree. And you can explain to everybody else. And that was in Chicago. 
And uh, that's something Scientologists will often say, you know, you got to try auditing to understand it. And I think the Scientologist wasn't fully understanding what Trashy was saying, was that this can be used against you later, and it does. It's used against, twisted, altered, and sometimes made up and presented as information that somebody shared in what is supposed to be a confidential Scientology session. And often it's not even true. It's just used to discredit the person. This is Scientology fair gaming and also what they call dead agenting, where they will use information to discredit somebody. And of course, he doesn't think that's going to happen. And he doesn't go on the internet or see any of the stories of the multiple people who have shared for decades that this is exactly what happens and your information is not safe. We're going to jump over to Denver now and take a look at Mexican Longhair, who is a First Amendment auditor, who's also been out there with Jay, Denver Scientology Audit. And he went in to file some complaints about Scientology officers who responded to Scientology and take a look at what happened. So you can't record inside to that big sign? I, You're going to I'm, leave the building right now. It is illegal sir, for you to record inside the building. I have business here. I don't care what that 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 TRS that's on that sign Uh is actually for funerals. There's no funeral taking place today. I'm here. I'm I'm telling you to leave the building if you're recording. If you'd like to stay and not record, I'll be happy to help. No, I'm putting it. This is my official business. I'm allowed under the First Amendment to. Yes. Do you have your. uh, Body came on. Yes. Thank you. Um, I am formally putting in these uh, customer complaints. Sir, I'm telling you. Sir. Hey, hey. Whoa. Oh. Jesus Christ! What the fuck is wrong with you? Nice pratfall. Oh, Jesus Christ, man. Out. No, I'm putting in my formal complaints here. You can do so outside, sir. Don't put your hands on me. What is wrong with you? Walk outside. This officer needs to be arrested Walk immediately. Outside. Get your. Sir, you can't record inside. See that big sign? I. You're going to leave the building right now. It is illegal sir, for you to record inside the building. I have business here. I don't care what that 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 CRS. All right, that's looping around there. But uh, how crazy is that? (laughs) And uh, again, that's Mexican law hair, long hair. We're going to have him on the channel soon. He's a really good First Amendment auditor and uh, has a lot to share on that topic. And I'd like to hear more about his experience in getting out there protesting Scientology and seeing what's happening too when you go in and you want to file these complaints about police. Now, We're going to take a little look. In fact, you know what? Let's do it with Pearl Snappy. We're going to go over to Austin and we're going to share a clip of a video where we find out a few things. There's so much. There is so much to talk to about this. This is why we got to do it with Pearl Snappy. So welcome there. Good to see you. Hello Hello there. there. Good Good morning. morning. Good morning. How does it feel to be Austin's most wanted at the the moment? (laughs) Well, Well, I mean, mean, I'm not not even... even the most, the most wanted, wanted frankly. frankly. Yeah, why, yeah, why is there, there echoes? echoes that no, I don't hear it. Or, uh, uh, not, yeah, I don't hear it on my end. Oh, wait, you know what? Nancy says she hears an echo. So maybe. Um, we'll let you me. figure that out. Oh, this is interesting. Hey, Silly bye Squirrel, bye. that last clip is saying, did he turn off his body cam? He pushed it just before he pushed the guy. Ooh, interesting. I didn't catch that. Maybe, maybe that's what happened. All right, let's see. Is it better? better? No. No. Well, let's see. Let's give it a second because there's a little lag on the on with the chat. Uh, Are you on your phone and computer? Do you have two things open at one time? That will sometimes do it. And yep, Avila says she can hear an echoing. So sometimes, if you have an open window of YouTube anywhere nearby, I have found. Yeah. Yeah. So let's see. So let's see. There's a little lag. So now we're caught up in the chat. So, yep. Nancy's saying we can still hear that. I'm gonna um. I'm gonna play the clip. Pearl, should we do that? I'll play the clip while you change position, and I'll pull you back up. Okay. Let's look at the clip, and then we're gonna talk about it with her. Let's take a look. This is uh, security says they're going to arrest Pearl Snappy on disturbing the peace. And this is on Miss Kim. This is on Miss Kim's stream. And it sounds like the guy has been a police officer for a long time. But Scientology hires them for private security. 
So it sounds like maybe that's the role, but Pearl's going to explain. Do you want to test it out? What about? Still, still, going. still going. All right, I'm going to play the clip. All right, while she works that out, let's take a look at this. Again, this is Miss Miss Kim in Austin. And uh, this officer says a few interesting things. And well, so, Travis County, you guys have been pretty in, cool. Travis County actually has a magistrate in the jail every day. Oh, cool. Because when I worked there and I booked people, I thought that was really cool that you actually had a judge right there. Uh, and they set bail and do a bunch of stuff like that based okay. upon what the officer, the information the officer gives them. All right. So that's kind of unusual. Uh, I don't know the law. Well, they do. The way they worked it in, uh, this is the Hollywood division, I oh, believe. Oh, yeah. That's LAPD. That's yeah, they have a lot Boston of different roles. Drama. They have to do private person's arrest, and it's it's really weird. And what it is, they do misdemeanors on Monday, and they do it's felonies on Tuesday. But for some reason, he didn't get no, in until Wednesday. Be Friday. Because if misdemeanors are Monday, it's an M. So oh, yeah, yeah. Friday, it's an M. <laughs> well, uh, hey, you be in there longer. Because they started on a Saturday. They starts with five, so they can't use a fraction. Right, right, um, right. Uh, well, they're a little bit more. Uh, the LAPD kind of works with Scientology a lot more than they. Sh I think they should. Well, you know, Lee Baca, the former sheriff of LA County, was a Scientologist. Okay, so I think it's so interesting that he brings up Lee Baca, who I'm not. As of 2020, he was still in prison. He was a sheriff who was completely in Scientology's pocket, and this officer identifies him as a Scientologist. I don't know for sure if Lee Baca was a Scientologist or not, but he definitely was a huge friend of Scientology, did a lot of shady stuff, went to prison because he interfered with an FBI investigation into his area because of his shadiness and illegal activity and got in trouble for it, which was absolutely fantastic. I think it's interesting, though, that he brings that up. Oh, and also, side note, at, at least as of 2020, I don't know if he's still there, but Lee Baca was in a prison in Texas. How did we not know that? I don't know. What's his name again? Lee, Lee Baca. Baca. He's, How he's long was he? Anymore. How long ago was that? Well, he left when I, uh, before I did, so that would have been probably... <laughs> Teens, or, or no, like I left 19 uh, in 2010, so it would have been that early time 2000s. Frame that. Yeah, that makes sense. A lot of things happened back then, and they even had a kiosk inside the police station for Scientology to watch their videos for a while. Yeah. So that's why they're, I think, they're having a whole lot more issue. Yeah. Is well, it's a different there's always too, four or five other state. cameras, and they won't look at them, and it, it exonerates them. And they want it. They put him in jail, and they let it uh, give it to the DA. The DA looks at all the evidence and says, "No, this is thrown out. It's always thrown out." Well, I mean that's the case. Officers have to go by what they see, the information they get. Well, they they try to show and them the cameras. Well, but then it's up to the prosecutors as to whether they're going to hold them. But when they try to show them the film, they won't look at it. And my husband, you know, I told you he was security, and he he said, for a police officer not to want to look at the video is just weird. Because even where he's at now, if something happens around their property because they have cameras all the way around, mm -hmm. he goes out and he just stands there because he knows they're going to come up and say, did you record it? And he's like, yeah, you want to see it? And he's like, yeah. And they go in and they look at it. Well, that's good. Yeah. That's but, Waco PD. Yeah. But like I said, you know, there's different, different rules, different structures. It sounds like, doesn't it sound like he was in... Los Angeles and worked in the in the police department at some time. And I think he said that he left in 2010, which is how he knows about Sheriff Baca. So he knows all about the LAPD's connection to Scientology. And now here he is in Austin. In each state. Hold on. Let's see if anybody's chatting. I'm going to back up because I think I actually passed the part. There were two parts I wanted to share with you. It was a part about him talking about Scientology's connection to the LAPD and then also when he's talking about Pearl Snappy, which I think is earlier. About these locked doors we've been seeing lately. Put it on one of the guy's feet. That's an assault. Here we go. And I've never actually been close before. So, and see, there's a security patrol car behind me. I know, I love the name. Yeah, you can't see much through the window. They're about to come close this. I want to make sure they close every blind. 
I also had an idea about these locked doors we've been seeing lately. <laughs> my big nose in there. Yeah. <laughs> so this is who she's speaking to. Yeah. We have had some issues with uh, one of your folks is using a bullhorn, so she is now subject to being detained for disturbing the peace. Really? Uh, she also... Because she, we've been told different things by different people. Well... They told us the day of the opening we could use a bullhorn. Well, but she was here yesterday. She used the siren mode on it. That's a violation. Right. That could cause an injury. Um, she took her camera stand and put it on one of the guy's feet. That's an assault. So all those type of things are going to be in you. So he's saying her using the bullhorn, putting a the the tripod allegedly on somebody's foot, which was an assault. That these these things. I don't do any of that. So, okay. Well, then we won't have an issue. Yeah. I'm, they, they tell me even that. That's about the loudest I get. I didn't even, yeah. I don't even use that. He was even yelling when the doors were open. That's a violation also. Because and he's calling out yelling while the doors open as being a violation. And this is why I want to talk to Pearl Snappy about it, because she has checked into the laws of what can and can't be done. She is really good at that. It's like I mentioned. Well, see, the day we've opening. been told that if it wasn't, um, what do you call it? No, you use something to uh, amplify your voice, mm -hmm. that the uh, human voice is not considered part of that. Well, it is sound in the it is and in she the carries a decibel well, meter. It is in the manner in which it's used. All right. You know, if you're yelling and screaming, so are they, they going to try to arrest her? We've had some discussions about it, so that may happen if she does it again. Okay. Um, but well, I'll I'll let her know what you said. Yeah. Because uh, I I tried to just quiet her down the other day, and I got in trouble for it because I was supposed to be taking her into custody for it. Mm. See, that's the thing, though. See, he's saying that he was supposed to take her into custody the other day, and he quieted her down. <laughs> I doubt that. <laughs> I doubt that. <laughs> so that's very interesting. He also said something at some point about that for somebody to be taken into custody over a misdemeanor, that they need to see it, that the police actually need to witness the person doing that. So we're working to see if we can get Pearl Snappy back on. Let me see. Did I hear from her? Nancy, have you heard from her? I think she went to, oh, wait a minute. Hold on. You're right there. <laughs> you are under a box. Well, let's see if anybody else can hear it. Let's see, Nancy, 48, yep. Yeah. That's just so strange. What about, what about now? I don't, I don't know, know what is that happening. Let's see. Okay, that's 848. Still echo. Nancy, there's still an echo for her. Go ahead and let me exit. exit. I'm right back. Okay. Yep, we're still hearing an echo. But how interesting is that, right? He's coming out, kind of doing it in a friendly manner, or at least wants to appear that way and talks about how if they catch her doing these things again, which she's been told by law enforcement are actually okay to do, that that they won't be able to, hold on, this thing is, hold on a second, I'm pulling you up here, but it's like under something and I can't, there we go, there you go. Okay, let's try it again. Chat away. Well, uh, well, I, I don't hear you now. Yep, maybe you're, you're not muted on my end. Do you want to try it on your phone? It says that you're, mu okay, you're muted. Oh, okay. I think you, can you say something? Can you hear me now? I can hear you now. Dempsey's saying, no, that's that's going going now. is it? Hold on, let's make sure. Because we got to let the uh, the chat has to catch up. So Yancey Kin oh, saying, like do you want to try it on your phone? Yeah. I can send, yeah. Do you want me to send you the link? No, I got it. I'll be right back. Okay, cool. All right, y'all. No worries. Let's get you pulled down there. Why does this look weird? Okay, so 
What do you guys think about this? Don't you think it's interesting? It's kind of like we don't often see where, and maybe this is an Austin thing and how they do it to let them know that, hey, we should have arrested her the other day. And if she comes and uses the bullhorn, yells while the doors are open and we witnessed it, we are going to actually detain her and do that. So that is very, you know, why not just do it if that's what you were going to do? You know, but to say, or is it just kind of like, it, it's just, it's interesting to me and I have a million questions and I think a lot of it, we're just going to have to let it, let it play out and see what happens. Okay, let's, let's try it. Someone suggested turning off the fan, but go ahead and start talking and let's see what we hear. How about now? Oh, about it's now? still echoing. Oh, it's still echoing. Try turning off the fan. Some people are saying that maybe the fan is distorting it. It is definitely, uh, it is definitely not that. Uh, not that. <laughs> OBG Foster. Hey, Osa, set your phone to airplane mode. Thanks. <laughs> I don't know what. Maybe if I take, I don't know what. Maybe if I take, this is obnoxious. People are saying it's better. Yeah, that it's better. Someone's saying no echo, no echo. So let's just go ahead. So tell me, Miss Most Wanted in Austin, what, is there any truth to this? Because you have brought up before that you have looked into what is allowed and what is not allowed. And in terms of the bullhorn and yelling with the door open. So what are your thoughts on this? So I was told that I can have. So I was told that I can bullhorn. have. I cannot have a PA. I cannot I only have a bullhorn. I can only have a bullhorn. And it has to stay under. And it has decibels. to stay under 85 decibels. Okay. So that guy didn't know what he was talking about. So that guy didn't know what he was talking he about. He made it very clear that he's there to protect. Made it very clear that he's the there to protect. Scientology. The church of Scientology and make me stand there silently, make me stand there silently, just holding a sign. So he's wrong. He doesn't know the so he's law. Wrong. He doesn't he know the law. He works for a security, he works group, for a security out of group out of Bastrop. He was a police he was officer. He was a police officer. He's out now. He's out now. And, and he thinks, thinks that he, that he could just detain me just for showing, showing up. up. And, and I didn't do any of those things that he's accusing me of. So I have to do some work. I'm consulting with an attorney. Um, Filing, filing some, some reports, reports with, with the PD, and I'm, I'm just, just going to have to see what, what I can, can do. do. Okay. So there still is a bit of an echo, but I think people got the importance of it. And let's... Um, you know what, when I get off here, I'm going to give you a call to just talk f through a few things and see about setting up another time to go ahead and chat about this. For sure. Are you around? So I'm going to call you right after this. Yeah, yeah sounds, sounds good. good. Okay, talk to you soon. All right, All right thanks. thanks. Bye. Bye. All right, we had a little bit of an echo there still, figuring it out, figuring it out. And I'm telling you, there's some technology issues today. Like I said, YouTube and StreamYard wouldn't allow me to upload a thumbnail. And there are a few things that look a little different than they normally do. So maybe something's just kind of being fixed. Anyways, this is something we want to keep an eye on. So I am going to connect with her and find out what the deal is, what the plan is. And I want to verify this, like she's saying, she has verified when she can use a bullhorn and when she cannot use a bullhorn. So it is an interesting kind of tactic. Pearl Snappy has been a thorn, more than a thorn in the side of Scientology since before they opened in Austin. And even more so because let's not forget, this is the woman who drowned out David Miscavige when he was giving his speech at the Austin opening. He does not like that. No, he does not. <laughs> Which, what does that mean? Means we love it. We love it. But uh, yeah, they're going to go at her. Usually with David Miscavige, he says, I want to see so-and-so behind bars. Which is what happened with Aaron from growing up in Scientology. And uh, yeah, sounds like they're trying to do that with Pearl Snappy as well. It does sound though like, um, I thought it was a great conversation. And yeah, Judy, I agree. Miss Kim was great at just drawing information out of him, out from the rent-a-cop. That was very interesting indeed. Now, a couple things I want you guys to keep an eye out for today. When you hit that subscribe button, hit the notification bell because I'm going to be doing an interview later today with Louis Rapetto again. He was on the channel last week. He is a former Scientology Sea Organization member and interrogator. Not just regular security check interrogator, interrogator. He was trained in very specific techniques that are used to reprogram people in Scientology to keep them in line. 
we talk a lot about mind control and programming and reprogramming in Scientology, but what does that mean? What does that actually look like? That is more of what we're going to be talking about today. I do believe we're doing the interview today at 4.30 Central Time. So 4.30 Central Time, I will get up a notification about it later on today. That's why I said when you hit subscribe, hit that notification bell as well, because I hear sometimes they actually go out. <laughs> and then you can know because I will be doing more interviews coming up. We've got some uh, some really fun people who are actually going to be coming on and we're going to get into some topics that are based on a lot of the questions that I continue to get from all of you. So I think you're going to find it very interesting. If you cannot catch it live, be sure to catch it on the replay and I want to know what you think. So tell us in the live stream or definitely your comments if you're catching this on the replay. So shout out to all of you who catch this on the replay, by the way, I appreciate it. And jump in and join the conversations. Tell me in the comments what you think, where you're watching from, what are your questions? And thank you as always to everybody who emails me, Natalie at sign, no, that's my, e that's my channel, email Natalie at lifeafteroccult.com with links to videos or news articles that you see. Give me a timestamp of, you know, where in the video is that happening? If it's less than 60 seconds, you can send a clip as well. Really appreciate all of you doing that. I'm going to check in with Pearl Snappy, get more, in, more information about that, and maybe can add an update later today when I come back on. But we'll definitely let you guys know. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for all of your support. You guys are absolutely fabulous. You keep showing up. I'll keep showing up. I appreciate it. But most importantly, get out there today and have the most amazing cult-free day.